before your throne. I come, I give you all glory, all honor, and praise. I thank you for this word. I thank you, Holy Spirit. I thank you that you bring all things back to our remembrance. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you lead and guide me. I thank you that I'll say what you would have me to say. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. So my message for today is, will you choose to press on? Amen? Well, there is some things that we need to do and we need to make a choice whether or not that we want to do it. The choice may not be uh, something that we want to do, but a lot of choices are done out of necessity. Amen? Uh, say, for instance, going to work. Now, we may not want to go to work always. We may not want to do chores in the house always. But again, necessity tells us that, that, we, need, that we need to do this whether we want to do it or not. Okay, when it comes to uh, that job, it may not be the greatest job. It may not be, it may not be the supervisor that we wanted or the getting up, but what makes us press on is what? That we have the rent to pay, we have bills to pay, and we want to eat, <laughs> okay? And the, then the chores, the home chores, the things that need to be done, things that need to be fixed, the cleaning, the laundry, do we necessarily want to do that? No, we don't, but it's a necessity. And then we make a choice to take care of those things. Well, I want to speak about forgiving. Sometimes forgiving, it might be hard, and forgiving is a choice, okay? And oftentimes, it may not be an easy choice. Can you think of some things that are hard for you? Hard for you that you don't want to forgive, that your flesh wants to say no. But in the end, it's still a choice. What will we do? We can for de decide that we want to forgive and then when we forgive, the Lord forgives us. Or we can and decide that once, you know, we may not want to, but when we know that the Lord has forgiven us, and then we can proceed. Amen? Or we can choose not to and hold it against that person and decide no. And then where are we? Amen? Okay, Mark eleven twenty four says, you can pray for anything, and if you believe that you receive it, the word said, according to Jesus, he said that you would have it. It says, but when you are praying, you all, and um, if anyone that you will hold on a, a grudge against, it says, if you are forgiven them, and it says forgive, and the, Lord, that the Father will forgive your sins at the same time. So when we are forgiven, we are asking the Lord to forgive us. Amen? And that's not always the easiest thing to do. But our Father demonstrated 
the greatest example of forgiveness. He gave his only begotten son. Amen. And when his son came, he came for, to die for us, for our forgiveness, for our sins. Amen. He was beaten. And he knew this. He knew this before he came, that he would be beaten. His, son, his skin was ripped. Can you imagine what it's like to be ripped into your skin is torn? I don't think we've ever experienced that. And he was nailed to that cross for us. And he, didn't, he could have called legions of angels, but he endured that pain for us. Amen. We can't imagine that kind of pain. But in the end, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Amen. That was the perfect example of forgiving, forgiveness. Amen. So I'm going to go to uh, ask you all to go to uh, Colossians 3, 12. And it says, put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, and long-suffering. And bowels of love is the same thing as compassion. Amen? Forbearing one another and giving one another. And for, I'm sorry, and forgiving one another. If any man has quarrel against any, even as Christ forgive, forgave us. Let me read that again. I feel like I read it wrong. Okay, number 13. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do you. Amen? So that means that we don't have it all together. We're supposed to love one another. It's not always easy, and a lot of times our flesh gets in the way. But we have to make what? A choice. And when we make a choice, we're choosing. We're choosing that we're going to do the right thing. We're speaking to that flesh and say, no, you won't. We're going to speak, we're going to do what the, word, what, the, what the word says, and we're going to be led by the Spirit. Because when we're led by the Spirit, he speaks to our spirit, and our spirit speaks to our mind. Amen? Sometimes there are, are diffi there's difficulty in forgiving, even more difficult because we have an adversary. And that adversary is saying to that flesh, but you remember what they did? And you're going to forgive that? How I, you, you don't have to forgive that. You need to let them know you're not a punk. Our flesh speaks that. And then it makes it, and, and we don't want to, and we think, no, I'm not a punk. But they did. They can't just do me any kind of way. But do you know that it's stronger to forgive? It's stronger when we forgive that person than it is to hold on to it. Amen. And then a lot of times they can say, well, just like they did before. And then it's, have you heard? that Satan go, comes to you and he goes deep sea diving and say, bring them, just like they do. Remember when they did that? Do you remember? And you gonna forgive them again? Yes. Yes. 
we have to forgive them again, okay? And you could be that you've just forgiven them. And things are kind of shaky. You know, have you ever forgiven somebody and even though your flesh didn't want to do it? But you still, you were a little shaky. You could be a little shaky. Here they come again. You just forgave them and look at what they're doing. And a lot of times it could just be a misunderstanding. But will, will our flesh see it that way? No. No, our flesh wants to do it our way. But do you know, in, um, let me see where it is. I wrote it down. So, uh, a lot of times when we are for, unforgiving, and we might ask ourselves, how many times do I have to forget, forgive them? Well, in Matthew 18, 21, Peter asked the Lord, how often should I forgive them? Do I need to forgive them seven times? And Jesus replied that you forgive them 70 times seven. That's a lot of forgiving. Even though we, may, we, not, we didn't want to do it, but we forgive them anyway. Because when we forgive, God is forgiving us. And we want to be forgiven. Every, I want to be forgiven. Amen? I don't, I don't want you to hold, I don't want the Lord to hold it against me. And did you know that unforgiveness is to uh, that person and you holding on to that thing and you holding and you holding, you thinking about how am I going to get even with them? That unforgiveness it's like taking in poison and waiting for that person to die. So you taking it in, you holding on, and they gone about their business. And who's suffering? And when you see them, I'm not going to speak. I'm not going to. And they not, they've forgotten about that it could be forgetting that they don't even, that it even happened. So we have to make that decision to forgive, to free ourselves. Amen? Amen. That was, uh, I remember it took me some doing to forgive. Uh, I would say I forgive, but then it would come back up. I would say I, I, for, I forgave that, but then it would come back up. When I was working, and I don't want to take up a lot of time with that, the person that hired me was, um, she liked me. She liked me enough. She, I got one promotion, and then I was promoted to coordinator. And um, she liked me a lot. And I liked her as well. And so then um, they had, they closed this one, the department, so they had to place me. And what they wanted to, what this manager wanted to do was give me a job where, and because we, it, 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 remember that I started on the level with my friends and then I was promoted. And so one of my friends, dear friend, she let you know, I don't care, all I want is a check. Okay, that was her, that was her prerogative, but me, that was not me. And then I got promoted, promoted, and so then, like I said, I was coordinator. And because the one job was ending, there were two, both of the, uh, they were, there were two assistant directors. I worked for one, and the two of them, they despised each other. Okay. But I didn't think it had anything to do with me. So in any case, I was working for this one, but the job that this one wanted me to do was to, to uh, correct my friend that was my dear friend. I didn't want that job. 
because that we were still friends. We still went to lunch together. And I had to choose between taking the job under this director or assistant director versus working over under her enemy, under her enemy that she hated a lot, that they hated each other. But because this job was safer, I chose to work under this one. And then this director came to my desk and said, so you no longer want to work for me. And, it, and I said, well, it's not that. And I couldn't tell her. I just didn't want that job of destroying my friend. But still, I was trying to explain. She said, but it's OK. I then became this one's enemy. Well, would you know, they were two assistant directors. This assistant director became director over everybody. And now, the one that she hated, she is now her boss. OK. And it was like she said, I told you I was going to get you. So what she did was, to me, and, and in her mind, I had turned my back on her, which I did not. It was a job. I didn't want to do that job. What she did was, and, and, I won't, and I wasn't perfect, but these were little mistakes that I made. What she did was she magnified, the, she became director and magnified them. And what they did was they demoted me. She had me demoted. I was demoted to back where I started. And when they demoted me, I lost my salary. My salary was, I lost close to $500 a month. And, and I'm saying, what am I going to do? I'm going to have to take Danielle out of this private school. I'm going to have to do this. I'm going to have to do this. I'm gonna, and we didn't take Danielle. We made it. We didn't have to take Danielle out of the school. So, and then what happened was they had, they decided above her that they had a reorganization. And then there were six jobs. The job that I had was at the top. And what they did was, at the, when I tested, I tested and I went all the way back up to where I was. Uh, six positions up. I'm sorry, it was four positions up. Okay? So I went, so what they did, so she was angry still that I went back. So what they did was, so people, and then there were people that were, just like there were people that were promoted, there were people that were demoted. But the, what she did was, when she, when, because it was, it was, uh, it was like uh, out of her hands to, to uh, do what, it, to, to do, uh, not demote them because they took a test that was, uh, that was done by, uh, what, what do the people call, um, they did, uh, I can't think of the word, they, they did not work for the same company, they, but they had the authority to say, these are going into this position, those are demoted to this position. What, they, what she did was, they kept a salary as from when they were up here. They kept their salary. What they did to me, what, how she did me was, she gave me the position, but they made me start as though I was a new employee in that position. And so I got a little bit of a raise, but it was not where I was supposed to go. And then I was, if I'm honest, I was afraid to fight it because I didn't need uh, another problem. So I said, well, I'll wait until later, and then I'll go back to it. 
and they said we have the we 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 have the privilege of doing what we want to do and so i never got that salary i i had to work back up there to get the salary and i and so when i retired i still didn't the person that was working under me was w making more money than i was but what it took but but what it what it did was the lord showed me that he was still giving me favor so and then so what satan would try and do is you should be angry with them you see what they're doing you see it when they, they just think that's five hundred dollars that's five hundred dollars a month that you're not getting that's five and it was hard but then he said forgiven so i said uh, Lord, I'm just going to, Father, you have to show me how to forgive that because it's wrong. But he, showed, he gave me peace. And what it do, did was it reminded me of Paul. And Paul said in 2 Corinthians 12, 8, he said, uh, different times I begged the Lord to take away this thorn in my flesh. And the Lord said, that my grace is sufficient. And so what he showed me was, even though they took that from you, I'm going to give you favor anyway. I'm going to make sure that your needs are still met. I'm going to make sure that you don't have, but you have to forgive it and let it go. And so from time to time, he would, the Satan would try and bring that up. And then I remind him, that's forgiven. The Lord has provided more than enough for me. You will, I will not bring that up again. And so even now, and he will say, what if, what if you, what? No. The Lord made a way for me. And you will not, I will not allow that to come up again. And I have peace. And I can say that, there, that, that I have no, forgive, no unforgiveness in my heart for them. I remember and I declare, when he tries to bring that up, I can say the Lord supplies all my needs. Amen? So, you know, that's really like a, a stab at my armor. Did you, real, did you know that? He's stabbing at my armor. Did you, you, they, they did that to you. That was yours. And then my response is, the Lord supplies all my needs. He supplied all of that. He supplies everything that I need. And no, I don't have, I don't, I'm not living in the house high up on the hill, but all of my needs are met. Glory, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. My needs are met. Hallelujah. And do you know that forgiveness is not for just for us to forgive somebody else. We have to forgive ourselves. Do you know a lot of times I didn't forgive myself. I made some doozy of a mistakes in life. And, but it's buried. John, in 1 John it says, but if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to, for, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But do you know that sometimes it was harder for me to forgive myself than me to forgive somebody else? But because I think about, I'm saying, your first name should have been stupid. That should have been your first name. But do you know that the Lord says who I am? He says that I was fearfully and wonderfully made. And so I have to go back and tell myself that. Yes, I did that. Yes, that did happen. Yes, it did. But it's buried. So then you know what I do then? I put that, that, that thought that Satan tries to bring. I tie it around a, a, a big 
iron rock and I throw it back into the sea. I throw it back there because of what God says. So if he's for me, who can be against me? Hallelujah. Who can be? I've already made that decision. I'm going to, I'm choosing. I'm choosing that I'm going to press on. And I'm going to press on in the spirit of the Lord. I'm going to press on that way. I will not let for unforgiveness hold me back. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So my message today is what will we do? Will we choose to press on? Because unforgiveness can keep us from pressing on. Yeah. Unforgiveness tells us no. I can't. I can't work with so-and-so because this is what they did to me. I can't work with them. Yes, we can. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Who said that we can't work with them? We made that decision. If we can, it's because we made that decision. Amen? So then, therefore, I can do it. No. I'm going to, we have to make that decision that I am choosing because it's a choice. I'm choosing that I'm going to take this path and not theirs. Amen? In life, Satan will try and attack us in many ways. We have to choose. We have to choose what are we going to do? Are we going to press on? Are we going to press our way through or are we going to give in? So for me, I'm choosing to press on and I'm declaring that I overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony. Amen. 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 